All right, the federal government lately seems to have turned its attention to the youths with a number of initiatives but it are put in place to develop the Nigerian youth and create jobs. One of such initiatives is the 75 billion naira youth investment fund being proposed by the Minister of Youth and Sports uh, Development. And don't forget, the federal government recently handed over the National Theatre to the C Central Bank and Bankers Committee to revitalize the creative industry and um, perhaps create one million jobs. In all of these initiatives, ICT is set to be one area to give attention to. Well, joining me now to talk more about this is the president of the Institute of Software Practitioners of Nigeria, Dr. Yele Okeremi. Thank you very much, Dr. Okeremi, for joining us on the program. Always a pleasure, Jose. Well, there have been um, a number of initiatives by government to get um, the youths uh, employed in the IT field. What do you make of all of these um, initiative? Well, I think, first of all, it's always a good thing when there are attempts to create jobs in economies. But I think it's more important to look at a specific strategy nationally to achieving this. So, for example, you've given two initiatives, uh, one by the Ministry of Youth, which is good youth and sport, and then um, the other one by uh, uh, the central bank and, and, and the, the bankers, bankers committee, committee yeah, I, I having to transform uh, the national uh, theater into a kind of a creative hub. Yes, mm. and, and that makes sense. However, what I noticed uh, with that particular move is which that of them now? This um, the, 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 the one with by the bankers committee. Okay. Yes, okay. is that it's in itself a, a smart thing. But I realized that you want to introduce IT into it. And of course, if you understand the meaning of IT today, IT permits everything. Mm. It's part of our lives. And uh, it's different from the way it used to be, where IT used to be merely business support tools. Today, technology trumps everything. However, I see that the way that transaction is being packaged may need a little rejigging. Because IT, while it is true that it is also creative, but IT is not exactly creative art. And so it shouldn't fall into those categories. Yeah, that, I mean, I, we need to understand that mm. it's a specialized category. Mm. Because so you talk about creative art, which is smart in its own self, but technology, IT, I mean, just like you, the name is, is both science and art. So there's a creative part of IT, which is like what you see in creative art, but there's a whole lot of science in it. No, I'm sure when they talk about the creativity, perhaps they are looking at um, people like you um, or startups, maybe in your area that um, develop those softwares that are used. Yes, and that's correct. And uh, there's a whole lot of attention. Um, to startups as well, and there's a whole lot of attention to technology. But one of the things I have said consistently, and I think I've said it on this platform before, is, see, if you want to do technology, you need a national strategy around it. So I can give you some examples. Please do. So, for example, when you talk about people creating apps, because there's a whole lot, like, just like you said, a lot of attention to startups, and I hear people even using languages like a startup ecosystem. And that's interesting when I hear that kind of thing. Because you see, we do not talk about startup ecosystems, ordinarily speaking. Because if you understand the meaning of an ecosystem in itself, an ecosystem, well, that comes from biology, but it can also be used. It talks about interactions between several parties. The issues about talking about startups is that First of all, startups are not new. So how do you describe this um, ecosystem, particularly so, when it concerns the startups? Yes, I, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm coming there. Mm. So startups need to be seen within the ambits of a bigger ecosystem. Because if you have startups and you do not know where they will end up, you are running into crisis. So for you to have a viable startup system, you need to have a situation that allows them to scale, that allows them to become significant. Because what happens in startups is simple biology. Nature is not very good at creating cream. 
So what happens is that you're going to have so many startups. So the, it's a funneling system. You have so many companies who are starting up great, brilliant ideas. But perhaps only 8% may survive. So there's a whole lot of risk coming in there. So you need to have a system that actually guarantees or de-risks the system. And the way to do that, ordinarily speaking, we don't need to start building from the roof. We need to build from the foundation. So the way to do this, to de-risk the system, and to guarantee and assure ourselves that startups can actually become significant, is to look at incumbent players in the industry. I've maintained this position for several years. What you need to do is look at some major players, ensure that we can create enterprises in the field that have scale, that can compete globally. And we don't even need to worry ourselves too much in trying to compete globally. We can start by simply doing import substitution. Just look at where the money is going. And that's why the, 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 the initiative of the Bankers Committee, I find to be very interesting and I like. However, it needs to, be, to my mind, I think it needs to be rejigged. Because if you look at how much we spend as a country on finance, the financial industry, I think it's significant in terms of technology spending. But the question is, we are spending so much, how much is retained within the country? And how much could have been retained within the country? So I think we need to take now a that, look at that. That. That, that, that brings to question indigenous uh, participation, perhaps. Absolutely, is where yes. you're driving at? Absolutely, yes. So how much of these indigenous, this is a sector where you operate and you've operated uh, in the sector for several years. Are you saying we don't uh, have... Um, do we really have qualified, you talked about skills, yes. do we have that skill to really be very competitive when it comes to IT? Look, unequivocally, yes. And I, I can say that, you see, the issues about life, everything about life depends on narratives. What do we say? When we came into the studio this morning, I just dragged the chair and sat down, you sat down the chair. No questions asked. Why did you sit on the chair? What if before we came into the studio, this type of chairs we are sitting on, they put three of them outside with broken legs. And just somebody standing outside the studio was talking about, oh, yesterday when some guest came, the chair collapsed. You and I would not be sitting down on the chair right now. And if we sat on the chair, once there's a little crack, we would be very fidgety. The question is, what do we say? When you talk about the sights and sounds of countries, that's what it means. So what do we do? Yesterday, for example, the Nigerian Bar Association had their elections mm. electronically. Mm. I read it, and it was interesting. Somebody pointed it to my attention. The tool that was used was by some foreigners. It's an American tool. So why are we not patronizing? That's what I talk about. It's a game of framing. Mm. It's a game of framing. You talked about, you asked about skill. Uh, we, went to, we, went, we all went to the best, to the same schools as the Americans. And we know what our levels were in class. And they also know what our levels are. It is the name that you call your child that every other person is going to call that child. But as long as we continue to spin that, oh, Nigerians don't have... I mean, and I get to hear a lot of that. I'm the president of the institute. And we go have meetings and people tell us, oh, we don't think Nigeria has the capacity. Who mm. says Nigeria doesn't have the capacity? Do we know how many products, how many projects are coming from foreign lands that are failing? The question is, if you really want to develop, you need to have a development mindset. And in development mindset, just like we spoke about when I talked about the startup ecosystem, there are possibilities of failure. If you don't give them the necessary support. So if you, no, whether you give necessary support or not, there are possibilities of failure. It's experimentation, you know. In ex performing experiments, you don't know the answer. If you knew the answer, you would call it an experiment. But without experiment, knowledge is never formed. Mm. You know, if you talk about knowledge, knowledge is about, you, you, you start by an informed position, an informed guess, which we call a hypothesis. Then you take it out to go and test. Sometimes your hypothesis stand, sometimes they don't stand. It's the same way with performing experiments. But what we are looking for a lot of times, and this is the challenge I see with the, when I talk about the national strategy. So somebody comes, you see an RFP, and they are asking, oh, we want a company that has 25 years experience. 
That's okay. It sounds good. And so you disenfranchise every other person locally. You go look at it in a foreign land. What you are inadvertently doing is that in 25 years' time, you will still be looking for 25 years' experience because you didn't allow anybody here. However, right. you need to have a development mindset. And you have to be very clear about it. In talking about development mindsets, there are high, there's a cost to it. But of course, there's also a reward to it. My guess, and what I know, is that nations that have development mindsets always win. And that's what I see as a challenge. The amount of money we spend. And I hear some of, even some of my colleagues in the industry, they talk about domain experience. That's absolute nonsense. What's the meaning of domain experience? Don't we have bankers in Nigeria? Is banking in Nigeria different from the banking in America? Don't we have people who have worked in JP Morgan and all the firms that are back in Nigeria? Listen, I say this all the time. It is the name you call your child mm -hmm. that every other person calls that child. Absolutely. And I think there's a need for us to press a reset button right now. Because actually, the pandemic is something that's a warning shot. I call it a warning shot. Take a look at what's going on today. Nobody can even travel. What that means is that should we have very severe challenges with some of our platforms that we depend on foreigners for, they mm -hmm. cannot even come here to solve the problem. So we need to begin to think mm -hmm. that we should be able to develop by ourselves mm -hmm. for ourselves. So if we're talking about looking inwards, it should also be IT should also be part of it. It's sadly because it's so easy to do if we know what we are doing. Okay, let's look at uh, the issue of data uh, you know, protection. That, again, mm. is uh, one issue that is very critical very in that um, industry. What do you think the country can actually do to deal with this issue and, of course, the sovereignty issue? Of data. Yes, thank you. It still speaks to what we are talking about. So, I mean, NITDA, for example, talks about data protection. And we try to fight a number of these issues. But let me tell you the truth. First of all, knowing fully well what we know today, data is very valuable. Data is, people call it the new, the new oil. But the question is, the person that controls the platform controls the data. What platforms do we control in Nigeria? All of us, we use Facebook, we use Twitter, we use all sorts of platforms. Actually, you remember that even for national identity, at the time they were muting the idea of giving it to MasterCard. So what you are inadvertently doing is you control nothing. Because let me tell you what happens. If you are not at the table for discussion, then you are on the table as menu. People are going to eat you up. And that's exactly what we are doing. We are actually creating and generating data and freely giving it out to foreigners. And until and unless the country begins to wake up, I mean, look, see other countries are doing it. China, for example, they have their own platforms. Hmm. And all these models we're talking about are models we don't need to think too much. We just need to copy and adapt these issues. For us to talk about data sovereignty, to talk about data protection the way we want them, then we need to be in control of the platforms, because he who owns the platforms controls what happens to it. Okay. Now we're talking about um, creating jobs. Uh, as a president of the Institute of Software uh, Practitioners, uh, what is the impact of industry association, you know, in making the industry create more jobs? Well, I think that's a good question, and I'm uh, well. I've been president for two years. My tenure—I'm happy to say that my tenure should expire in the next two weeks or so. Mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to my successor. But to let you know that Eastbourne is 20 years old, and for 20 years, well, 21 years old actually. I celebrated 20 years uh, last last year with the president. I want you to understand that the job of industrial association is to have people with similar interests. And what's our interest? The interests are what I've talked about. I insist, for example, that Nigeria is capable of developing by its own self. Nigeria does not need to borrow money. Actually, we borrow money in stupid kind. I use the word stupid kind. Because what you do, you say you are taking a sovereign loan from China or from another country. What for? The country then comes to offer services that our citizens could have offered. So what we are doing actually is exporting jobs and importing unemployment. 
So these are the things that Ispon has been doing for 20 years. First of all, we want to engage and ensure that some of these issues stop or at least are controlled. And hold on, Ispon is not saying that we will not cooperate with other countries. No, we have to cooperate. But we insist that we want to cooperate as equals. We want to cooperate as respectable partners. You don't come to my backyard here and bring, I don't want, I don't want to say inferior, but I say substandard solutions. Because a number of applications that come to Nigeria, I call them substandard. Not because they are not good, but because they were not developed for us. So it is when they come here that we actually start teaching them how to make it work for us. Why couldn't we have taught ourselves that? One of the things I've seen is that Nigerians and Nigeria seems to be a lot more patient with foreigners who come and peddle a lot of substandard things than their own brothers and sisters who have cap capabilities to come up with uh, superior ideas. I, I may both to say, I mean, you, you know that in the past few days, we've had lots of challenges, even on our electronic channels. Mm. Um, you know, why are we having those challenges? Who are the solution providers? I am a solution provider in that field. And I can tell you clearly and boldly that my, our solution is very stable. Designed, implemented by Nigerians. Very respected. Yet, the, the issues are what do we talk about. So I'm saying that what ISPON will continue to do are these engagements. We will continue to bring up to the fore and to the face of both policymakers and the market mm. as well what the possibilities are. Because our belief is that Nigeria has a great future only if we know how to organize a national strategy. And I think that's a very good point to leave this conversation. Let's just hope um, we eventually get it right, uh, make things happen uh, uh, here for us, by us, basically. Thank you very much, Dr. Okeremi, for coming on the show. Pleasure, Yele Okeremi is the president of the Institute of Software Practitioners of Nigeria. After the break, we'll look at half-year results of cement companies released so far. To stay with us. <laughs>